Am I there? I may be starting. Okay, there we go. Sorry, we're running a little bit late today. I'm getting ready for Sunday when everything goes off schedule. And this week, if you've read through the um, Bible study online, um, you'll notice it says the fifth Sunday of Easter. Yeah, I decided to change all the dates since I've no, um For All Saints, for some reason, the program that we follow did not make an All Saints program for the year B, which we are currently in. And so our second lesson is also part of the scripture for the fifth Sunday of Easter. So we'll use the fifth Sunday of Easter's Bible study. It's the same thing, except for they start off with Christ is risen. Which He's I risen suppose, indeed. Yep, I suppose that's not a bad thing for any Sunday. And so, but as we're waiting, we're talking about how our COVID numbers in the four county area here of Cottonwood, Murray, Lyon, and Redwood have all been high this week. And so, just making sure we're going to take extra precautions and try to keep ourselves safe. So I'm going to start wearing a welder's mask. Hopefully I don't run it. No, I'm kidding. But just trying to make sure we uh, wear masks whenever we feel that there's a abundance of risk and make sure you get vaccinated and mostly be smart. Okay. Well, we come to... Let us take a moment of prayer. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys that have, you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, this coming Sunday is All Saints Sunday. And so we remember all the saints who have gone before, all the saints who are currently with us, and all the saints who have yet to come. And so for our um, second lesson, we have from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. So here the description is, Here is a vision of the new heaven and new earth in which God resides fully with God's people. So that morning, despair and pain have been eradicated. These renewing words from the God who spans all of time are trustworthy and true. John writes, I see a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and the sea it was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Here ends the reading. Yes, we start with Christ is risen. And Christ risen is risen indeed. indeed. Well, the last book of the Bible, the Revelation of John, was written several years after Jesus' resurrection. But as we have discovered in previous week's reading of Revelation, the resurrected Christ's victory over sin and death, the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign, is central is the central seminal act of God impacting all time, history, and peoples. Christ's resurrection is evidence that ultimately God is in control. Life is is the final word. So what difference does it make to say, ultimately, God is in control? We have to let go of our ideas sometimes and try to be more reliant on following where he'd lead us. Mm -hmm. Be more open to following. You know, I think sometimes people think God is in control is like he's the pu puppet master rather than just yeah. being the one overwatching everything. Again, I like to go back, back to the parent imagery. 
you know, you send the kids out to go and play during the day, go and out to work in the field. And some freedom. Freedom, to, yeah. Freedom to choose and everyone, yeah. In this situation, it, it's kind of difficult to know. Uh, I feel that well, way. Well, it follows what we felt. We should have started when we started here, <laughs> our discussion, because it kind of follows yeah. our discussion. Oh, well, that's the hard part, yeah. With all Ultimately, it, it the COVID is... is Something yeah. we have to live with because we can't change it. Yep. It's just part of what well, we he have can to do have, that. Help, yeah. Have him help us live through it. Yeah. yeah. Choose the right decisions to yeah. Yeah. help yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah. So it's not that God makes it all go away, but no. He's there with us but and walking it, with us. Yeah. And yeah. He sees a bigger picture the beginning, than we do. the end. Yeah. But He gives us the right to. Uh, make decisions that, oh, yeah. and hopefully we do what. And we right all thing. feel we have the right decision, but it doesn't necessarily mean that any of us know for sure what's right. No, that's we why. We don't, you know. So I like Paul's or um, Martin Luther's letter to Philip Melanchthon: "Is sin boldly, mm -hmm. that grace may abound more boldly." It's not that we're supposed to go out and sin, but it's realizing that we need to do something. Because sometimes doing nothing is worse than doing something. And realizing that if yeah. we do something and we find out it's the wrong thing, to realize there's grace for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, because sometimes there are no good decisions. And he helps us through bad decision making. Yeah. And maybe from doing something wrong, we can correct it and make a better outcome. And learn from it. And, you know, yeah. You know, you see a storm, and a storm devastates an area, but you come back in a few years, and it, there's growth, or yeah. there can be destruction. New life. Yeah, new life. Well, yeah. That leads us to the next question. is What does it mean to say that life is the final word? I guess we led into that, didn't we? I mean, that's the amazing thing to go back. I went and visited Mount St. Helens. You know, a few years after the explode, it erupted in what the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. seeing the new growth happening yeah. there, mm -hmm. go out to a Custer State Park after um, mm -hmm. um, fires, and seeing new growth there. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I wasn't the healthiest when we went to New Orleans, but I mm -hmm. was a lot better, and we had some really great people all along and. But to see New Orleans and then to see the destruction, and then we went back again, yeah. you know, it was kind of... That was rebuilding. Sometimes, yeah. But, yeah, but there was some things oh, there that were left a lot for of things that waiting way. for somebody else to come in and help. But well, so there's a lot of destruction. Have much equipment to do some of that. That is stuff. right. They don't have the or the money, for some of those they didn't. Yeah. They didn't stick around. They had yeah. no reason to stay in New Orleans, so they went someplace and they never came back. But they had to wait for us so so long before they could deem them uninhabited and no, and or, and then yeah. they, or then they could yeah. abandon yeah. and then yeah. they could right. step in and do something. Yeah. If I remember yeah. right. Because, yeah, I mean, that's hard when the economy is crushed. You want to go someplace where you can get a job and provide for your family. And Every situation is a little, you know. Yeah, well, we remember going through that in the 80s when farming had low as, you know, people were well, searching for work. Right here, there's been floods that have well, caused look a at lot the of damage oh, to yeah. the homes. And they yeah. actually uh, can't, or it's be foolish to... We do it Rebuild, because yeah. it happens again and again and again. They kind of move them out. Mm -hmm. Relocated the floodplain. Relocate them. Yeah. Yeah. The city helps them maybe or yeah. at some the kind state. of funds. State, yeah. Yeah. And, so, but you and look at the yeah. end of Tracy that was devastated in 68. And well, that you could hardly even... Too. I know, but you hardly even know unless... But of course, you never know when they're going to occur either. No. But nope. uh, you do the best... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But life still comes back. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I've been hearing about Henderson, how they, with the flooding and that, how much they're talking about doing something about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can only the, recover so many but times. Some of these aren't easy to do. No, yeah. they take drastic. Well, it's I like, think they've been going on for that for a long time. Well, it's not that much different than here. Was they're trying to figure out what to do with the uh, yeah. uh, culvert over by Lake Laura. I mean, do you invest in putting something bigger to be a lot more long term, or do you? In, well, that was the devastation that, the time. that was a devastation that hardly ever hundred years that would have never when that when that when we, we had all of that rain oh yeah and our, our well, ditches yeah. were lakes and rivers and we'd never had that yeah. that's how do you foresee that something like that is like probably a hundred years they say you know yeah so, but, yeah. And so, but you can't we rebuild. Everything, but, yeah. yeah. We come back. Okay. Or like, I suppose it's the other thing I've heard for those of us fortunate to be more to the south end of the state is, you know, I heard farmers thinking in, you know, end of July, beginning of August, they might just plow everything under. And so far, I've heard, you know, the numbers have been surprising, better than anybody expected. So, at least south of, south of here. We have a field that we hardly ever had, I, I don't ever remember having as good a crop as we had on it because yeah. it, it usually just dries up. Yeah. But this year we had a good amount of rain yeah. on it and so. I bet kills there. So, okay. Well, John's vision in today's reading is filled with hope. After all the tribulations and cosmic battles described in previous chapters, John sees culm the culmination of history as something totally new. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. All the suffering of this world will be no more. Every tear will be wiped away. Death itself will be no more. And even the sea, the symbol of chaos, and the place where the forces of evil and revelation are earlier cast, is no more. In this heavenly vision, all of the only two familiar trials and challenges of life are gone. Everything is simply cleaned, restored, or renovated. Everything is new. So describe a time in your life when you receive something precious and new. Your kids? Yeah, I was going to say, every thinking, new birth is a new yeah. guy. And, uh, and We're farmers and we had a lot of new births in our cattle yeah. and, and, yeah. and some of them are part of our livelihood and mm -hmm. we had a brand new tractor zero hours on it while well, hardly any hours you on get it. that new tractor smell yeah yeah i think that's pretty cool mm -hmm. new car yeah. but you mom and dad you usually got Reese. henry's yeah. henry's car which had didn't have too many miles but yeah we did go through a few years didn't we yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's anyway. kind of nice to have something new I know, after a while, I guess I had a new home. home. Yeah. No one else lived in my home. Yeah. You were born in your home, so it, it was new at one time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what would it feel like to have everything new? I don't know. I guess I'm comfortable you with old. All your old old yeah. Either? I can I remember can't... crying over the new church. Or, yeah. And we left the old one and a new car. I, mm. I guess I, I like the old. <laughs> yeah, I know that was sad when they took our totaled car and put it on the trail on the back of the truck oh, and drove yes. it away. You know, yeah. you yes. get some all those car. memories yeah. and yeah. I remember that. Yeah, got a new car and the old one was gone, and it's kind of like. Yeah. Well, on the flip side, it's. I nice don't know if it's just me or if it's. You know, that's the hard well, part. Made, it, you remember the old stuff, but it's nice to have new things where you don't have to worry about it breaking down right away. That, you don't have to. True. Yeah, and uh, you know, you don't have to worry about all the maintenance. And there's know. some things that are coming up now. I was just uh, all these uh, electric cars. Oh, yes. Yeah. And what did I read someplace that was going to be all new by? That's always been what you want, Mama's an electric car. <laughs> What? If really, you aren't she driving did. too far, it's not bad. She, she it said, is. Bob and Ruth want to have that electric car, you know. It's the weirdest thing. It doesn't make any noise. Yeah. 
It's yeah, they're talking I, at some point they had talked about having them have some sort of noise maker. Well, they did well, have it, some it, kind it, of a the, yeah. ticking or something. No, for yeah, for the blind and for just or anybody. The, if you walk out, walk through a parking lot at Walmart, it's weird. You're not going to hear it when it yeah, starts it, to back up. Something about the deaf. That, yeah, that too. Right. And so, but nope, it's everything has changed. But I have to admit, heated seats are nice. Not going to complain about those. Okay. While well, this newness occurs because of God's dwelling with humankind. See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them as their God, and they will be God's peoples, and God's very self will be with them. The Greek word used for home and dwell is the word tabernacle. It brings to mind God's saving presence with the people of Israel. The Gospel of John used the word to describe Christ as the word who is made flesh and lived among us. The vision of new heaven and new earth is the artic articulation of being in, in the full presence of God, dwelling in a full relationship between God and God's people. Reflect on a time when you felt the fullness of God's presence. I help Melissa as she was being baptized. And it was just an overwhelming feeling of this is a child of God and, and how precious she was to me yeah. and always will be. I was her chosen mother. And it was many times. Yep. Probably one of the hardest times. That too. Yeah. Think about hearing when we hit the right song at the right hymn at the right time where everybody sings and it just it starts bringing on tears and yeah. joy and remembering. Music does that. Mm -hmm. I know we visited with Doug and Lori last Saturday night and that was something that they just haven't found a, a church that makes them feel like they belong. And part of it was they enjoyed the music and, yeah. that, and the uh, acoustics are good at yes, saving really them for that. Um, but, uh, yeah. I think I do. I feel the presence of God every time I... I hear a special song. Mm -hmm. and, uh, God's everywhere. Yeah. yeah, but when do you really feel... Yeah. We get so busy in our lives that yeah, we get distracted. Yeah. Walking yeah, outside some sometimes, sometimes too. For what we think sometimes are important. Mm -hmm. Are they? How important are some of the things yeah. that we, yeah. we get distracted? But yeah, I think the quietness at the farm when you go outside. Yeah. yeah it's just, it's the other night when I went out, and woke up at, at quarter to three, and I knew that the, the aurora, yeah. the northern, northern lights, lights were yeah. supposed to be out there. And it was disappointing because at seven o'clock it had been so cloudy. Yeah. So I. Uh, I had gotten up and I thought, I'll go out and look. And it wasn't as big and wonderful as you sometimes said, but there was almost like you could see horizon was going to be um, yeah. sun coming up on the north. And well, it was, that's what it was, but it, was, it wasn't the shooting. Yeah, they said we didn't get it as spectacular. Nature, as no, nature no. is one thing that yeah. is. Uh, a little scary to think it's being pelted by solar radiation, but <laughs> we're realizing it's not the dangerous kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, see, I'm making all things new. The one sitting on the throne says to John in the vision, note that the change in the verb tense, no longer future, but present tense, I am making all things new. The death and resurrection of Christ brings life and hope, not just for the future. It also impacts the present as well. There are only two occurrences in Revelation where God speaks directly to John. For in, first chapter, in the first chapter and then here. 
In both instances, God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. God who was and who is and who is to come. God, the beginning and the end. Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. God says, which we, to which we respond, Amen. So what does it mean for God to be the Alpha and the Omega? He's our everything. The beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Our everything. All-encompassing. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just pop into our lives somewhere in the middle, but mm -hmm. throughout. Okay, now he switched the word among us. Something old, something new, something borrowed, mm -hmm. something blue. This poem offers wardrobe advice for a bride as plans are made for what to wear for the wedding. Have you ever seen this advice being followed at a wedding? I think most people do feel mm -hmm. that they have to follow yeah, that. Most of the brides I see have. Yeah, I remember trying to find everything when my wife and I got married. Mm -hmm. So in today's reading, we hear the seer John describe God's, God's fulfillment of all time and history with God's will. To, will is finally done and God's presence fully known. John describes this fulfillment as a new heaven and a new earth. God ushers in a new creation, a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. It is a holy city where all the suffering and trials of the present age are no more. There is nothing old, nothing borrowed, nothing blue. There is only the newness of a new creation, the indwelling of God and a full, complete relationship with God's people. See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them as their God, and they will be God's peoples, and God will be with them. Do you relate to this imagery of bride and bridegroom? I can explain. Yes, you know. I always think about the connectedness and the covenant. I mean, when you walk down that aisle, you know, you know you're going to make this promise to be connected to this person for the rest of your life. And, you know, so, it, you know, in a way, we see God making a similar promise is to be connected to us. For, well, yeah, to his is for eternity. Yeah. You know, and it's also the just the presence, you know, what it's like to have your spouse, you know, knowing you're going to be with this person for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. That you have that, that presence, that you aren't going to be in life alone. And of course, you have the, uh, when you do the please rise, you have everybody turn and go, Ah, or oh, it was great. It's been too long since I've done a wedding. Oh, but when everybody looks at the bride, you hear the gasp of approval usually. They walk in. For mom and I, we didn't really have that. We had our pastor and our witnesses, and that was the presence, and mm -hmm. it lasted us a long time. Yeah. But yeah, I know. Typically, everyone wants that big event, but sometimes it's the simpler it is, is just yeah. as good. It's one of the things that I didn't want. So yeah. yeah. yeah well, it, it, it's, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I know my wife and I compromised. We did smaller, not big, but, mm -hmm. yeah. but not quite that small. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's, yeah. So, and then... What does this imagery say about the relationship between God and God's people? Well, we're connected. Yeah. Although in the Bible, there's a lot of reference to weddings that are very big. And very and elaborate. That, that is. And with this. Traditional. To and, be. And, and with this crazy COVID, there's been that weddings <laughs> changed plans how many times oh, yeah. i'm just glad it's easier now but yeah. but still hard but god is uh, yeah it's i think many people instead of church weddings have gone to 
outdoor, outdoor venues yeah. that I've seen some just beautiful oh, yeah. vineyards and it's nice to have um Painted prairie near us. I think yes. the size of the crowds are one of the probably the more that's gotten smaller uh, to be avoided. Than, yeah. uh, yep, I have to admit, when I read through the cemetery, though, I go back to Genesis, where it, in the, beginning, in the yes. beginning God was walking in the garden with Adam and Eve, and the intimacy. Of, I can't imagine just walking out in the garden and having God walk by and say, "Hey, how are you guys doing today?" Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think about the intimacy as this is, for me, is bringing about the idea that that's going to be our new relationship with God. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to be walking down the street and we're going to bump into God and just have that connection like you do with your, you know. At least that's what I remember being newly married is the house was small and you bumped into your spouse a lot. Because mm -hmm. you... When you're first married, there's not a lot of cash there usually. And so, okay. Well, this new creation is brought about by one who says, I see, I am making all things new. God's creative work is taking place now. While the vision of a promised future for God's people, while the vision is of the promised future for God's people, God is even now making all things new. We await with joyful anticipation a time when God's reign is complete and all suffering and death is no more. In the meantime, we are given hope, courage, and encouragement in our struggles. Our language fails as we try to articulate the promises of God in Christ. These promises are summed up in the words of God in Revelation. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. All will be complete. We will know the fullness of time in the resurrected Christ. Life, not death. Hope, not despair. Salvation, not condemnation. All these are final words spoken by God. So what does it mean to have God fully dwell with us? I don't think what you just said yeah. about the walking side by side. Mm -hmm. um, you know. you know, one of the things they talk about early on is the dwelling is like tabernacling the tabernacle moving with the Israelites when they're going through the wilderness, you know, can't imagine going through imagine and that? having, you know, the Ark of the Covenant and the tent right there and knowing that, or even seeing Moses go up on the mountain and seeing the light and the lightning and the glowing of his face. Well, I think 40 years it took him to cross all that area that, that does and then we have pioneers that set out mm -hmm. uh, on just months to go yeah. similar distance. Yeah. I think for part of that is... Anyway, it's the yeah. same thing now. There's a lot of unknowns that people strike out on. And, yeah. Uh, Nice to know Even that you're for kids going to school. There's a lot of new things in, yeah. in that are almost yeah. I think you know, like with I guess it always will be. Going to school as we try to send gifts with them so they know they aren't alone. Yeah, that's true. And so it's you know, as God is trying an to adjustment, but make sure that they know that they're not alone. Yeah. But and they Cause that can be a lonely time when you get your first step yeah. out out yeah. by yourself. Oh, I remember the. I wasn't going to go back home for two weeks, and boy, that was the longest two weeks I can ever remember. But I, because, yeah. And it wasn't that far, but it was just. Just the idea you couldn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Well, this next part you can tell is from, from a few years ago. But the, the ELCA was celebrate, celebrated its 25th anniversary in 2013. The theme for the celebration was always being made new. Although the theme is based on 2 Corinthians 5.17, the message is the same in Revelation. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new from 2 Corinthians 5.17. The good news of God in Christ changes lives and creates a new way of living. We live in the present life and assure in certain hope that God is with us, and we anticipate the life to come when we will know the fullness of God. 
In word and deed, we proclaim this good news and embody the words from Revelation. Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And so the question is, what do you find trustworthy and true about these words? I guess God can change our lives and and uh, help us in the way we live. When do we give up the old and accept the new? Well, that's, you talked about baptism. That's one of the times we recognize the old self goes away and we become the new self. It doesn't mean all sin goes away, but no. it's a process. We get, in seminary, we get in the argument over justification and sanctification. You know, we are justified. Okay, that again? The argument between justification and sanctification. Justification is when we're made right with God, which for Lutherans is Jesus did that, so it's it's done. But sanctification is the process of what of us becoming closer to God, trying to be holier, trying to be better, and having God work within us to make us holier and better. And so it's it's like we've uh, already got we're already welcomed into the family. So now, how do we live out our part of the family? God's work, our hands. Yeah. How do we make it part of who we are? And so it's always a process. You know, mm -hmm. we talk about waking up every day, trying to do better, trying to live as God would expect us or want us to. Yeah, it's kind of a hard thing. Yeah, that's the hard thing. I don't know if anybody else does it but you finish the day and you think about all the things you should have done or could have mm -hmm. done and i i and find myself i could have done better right and how can we prevent mm -hmm. some of the divisions that yep. are caused how do we work on it yeah be, um, probably over a little or nothing well it's you know that's a hard part for me families to, yep. whatever, yeah is trying to figure out how to work it in the church is to the church making sure that if we have division that we can work to come together yeah right I mean, the church should be one place where we can have people who have different opinions ways of approaching opinions. I think of all these churches now that are. Oh, that's the hard thing to see. What are you? What do you yeah, but you know, it, Mom, if if what I hear is right, they have heard or, or taken the context, and 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 it's maybe not what was intended to be said, but it's what was said. Mm -hmm. And because it was said, it's caused divisiveness, a division. There's and one thing about words that come out of your mouth, you can't get that, it back in again. Yeah, so it, it's, yeah. and it isn't always come out right. Yeah, and I and know. where we get our information sometimes, um, it, it's kind of like, what did you hear? Where did you hear that? Other, really, we're teaching yeah. to be bisexual in school. That's what my friend said. And, oh, yeah. and it's like, really? They they don't have that in the curriculum. They're more accepting of how you are sexually. Yeah. But I mean, they haven't rewritten no. everything. I mean, that's just not, we just need to. I think part of it too is the way we receive the information. Mm -hmm. is, I mean, if somebody says something that offends you is, do you say, how did you know do you use the grace you mm -hmm. know do they you know what is that the, did they say it and not mean it in the way that you heard it right mm -hmm. you know yeah. we we're too, way too easy to assume that the other person is saying something to be mean mm -hmm. yeah or, right or to be offensive, offensive. And, yeah and not enough of going right. yeah. you know yeah. this is how i heard it is that what you meant right you know right. and and I and I know for a fact that's partly what happened in Slayton. I yeah. know, you know. The, I still remember going. You know, my pastor growing up said something that bothered me in a sermon. And, did you talk to him about it? Well, that was the scariest thing. Yeah, in the world. <laughs> yeah. See, that's kind but, of it. And we talked and realized he was coming from a from a different perspective. Now I'm and, coming and from a different perspective, and that you, they didn't clash. No, it's just we're seeing. You know, it's like you well, have some, two blind people explaining an elephant. Well, it's really thick on this end and really solid. 
Yeah. Well, it waves around on this end, up and down. It's, you know, you aren't, you're, you're both aren't wrong, but you both aren't right. And, yeah. And it's realizing it's... Or realizing that you probably do think the same thing, but you just come at it a different angle. I think my wife and I, when we were moving down to, or going down to interview for her first call, we got in a discussion and we we're arguing for about an hour in the car. And then we realized that we we're arguing for the same point, just coming at it from different directions. Yeah, that's what I meant. And so, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's, just not hearing it. Yeah. And so hearing the words, I think that's the other hard part is this is trustworthy and true is, is we have to believe in the one who says that one. And that's sometimes can be hard. But uh, again, this being All Saints Sunday, it's for me, it's also helpful to remember that, you know, my great grandparents believed this, my grandparents believed this, my parents believed it. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's not something coming out of yeah. it's not like God is suddenly popping up and saying, Hi Chuck, I'm here. Listen to me. It's yeah. you've been He's Chuck, been God's been Chuck, there the right? whole time yeah. and He's been with you all the time. Yeah. And so it's not like something new. I think uh, yeah. And I think we sometimes forget about the importance of that history is. It, it is, it is. And some of it's good. Somebody that has, some is bad. Uh, growing up in other situations. Mm -hmm. But there are times and when, yet, there are families where you have been raised as a church growing family, but your children have married spouses that are not of that same persuasion. Sometimes they mm -hmm. become but there part of the church. And, one God. I know, but mom, they sometimes fall away and don't see that, that that's for them, they're too busy with work yeah. or play or whatever. They don't find that connection, mom. Yeah, we get distracted easily. Yeah, there's a and, lot of distractions. Yeah, but like you right now, have, I, I gotta go play my it. Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, yeah I don't even know how to turn one on. That's right. I'm right there with you. Um, but you know, I I had kids that worked with me who could you know would finish work and then go and play and then. We, not, not go to sleep, but come right back to work. Yeah. But there, you know, and then you got sports. How many people were watching the World Series last night? I'm hoping nobody was watching the Vikings game on Sunday. Oh, how hard um, that was! Well, I did watch that, and I, I, I well, no, actually, I taped the World Se the World Series okay. game and watched it later. So. The Vikings, I should never have watched them. Oh. I missed the Vikings on that one. I was. You're lucky. You I fell asleep, probably didn't, huh? I probably didn't know where to find them. What? Well, yeah. she had trick or treaters. She okay, had yeah. more trick or treaters than That's me. That's true. Yeah, we that had is a few. true. I did. Yeah. You only know, we get distracted by work and by family, and it it's easy to get distracted, especially if you're like and, me and like and procrastinate. And Pretty important, so that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not saying the other stuff isn't important. It's just trying to figure out how to bring everything together, like the Alpha and the Omega. Where is, you know, do we get just get stuck on a couple of things in the middle and miss the whole big picture? Big picture. So okay. Well, that brings us to the end of the Bible study. So let us pray. Creator God, we give you thanks that you continually make all things new. Help us live faithfully and creatively, knowing you dwell with us and trusting in your promises of life and salvation. Amen. Amen. For the last word, look for ways God is making all things new in your life. And then for announcements, um, yes, I always dread these weeks. But last Sunday was an odd Sunday, and this next Sunday is an odd Sunday. So this week we will have early service at St. Olaf. So it's oh, yeah. not the every other week. And so hopefully I show up in the right place. And then we'll have late service at 1030 at English. And we're doing Bible Sunday at both and English and St. Olaf. we have our clocks. Yep, and the clocks fall back. Right. So yep. 
Don't if you don't set your clocks correctly, you get an hour of prayer time. Not a bad thing. Well, I've got one that's on top of the refrigerator that last week it went back. Ooh. Because it was on the old set, one. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's been doing that for I don't know whenever, whenever they changed it. Yep. And it works. I just wait a week. And, oh boy, I look at that. Nope, no, that one's the right one. You know, yep. it's an hour is quite a difference. So. Oh yeah. And so, well, thank you, and uh, thank you all for joining. And realizing I may have to get my computer because I'm not able to see all the uh, comments. comments. So I showed them a little bit better. But but thank you all for watching, and thank you for coming. And we'll see you again next week, the same place, same time. So God be with you. Even. Uh,